First, I want to remind everyone that uh, the first step for the criminal process to be triggered is when the police is called. It's oftentimes by the DV victim, but sometimes by a witness like a neighbor to a DV incident. Even in the midst of shelter in place, as Sunita mentioned, victims are still able to call the police to seek help and criminal cases are still being filed and heard in criminal court. And that's because the police, the DA's office and criminal court courts are essential services that have been allowed to remain open. And that's been true here in Santa Clara County. Our criminal courts handling family violence cases have been open every day during shelter in place. Some types of hearings were initially delayed during the first few months of shutdown, including jury trials. Now these were hearings that involved coordinating with more people like victims and witnesses. Um, however, even these hearings have since resumed their pre-pandemic pace here in Santa Clara County. Um, uh, note though that court functions do look different now than they did prior to shelter in place. And they've changed depending on how restrictive the public health orders have been in response to the rising COVID-19 COVID-19 numbers in our community. So for example, this week in response to the surge in COVID-19 cases in our county, our Superior Court issued a new order that restricts the number of people or the types of parties that are allowed to even come into the courthouse. So for criminal court, um, the, the defendants, as well as the attorneys on both sides, and, and only witnesses and victims, including DV victims that have been subpoenaed for court, and that's the court order that requires them to show up for court. Um, their victim advocates can come as well, as well as parents of minor victims may also appear. Um, if DV victims go to court um, under subpoena, the same COVID-19 restrictions uh, that you see elsewhere apply, including screening at the front so that you can't enter if you have COVID-19 um, symptoms, have to wear a mask and practice social distancing. So for other hearings, the victims and the public at large may not attend in person. However, some courts, including here in Santa Clara County, have created options for victims to appear remotely if they aren't able to appear in person. The first is through video calls in the same way that we're doing here through Zooms or through Microsoft Teams. Courts are allowing victims to appear via the remote link. Um, so for example, if the victim wants to provide input about the type of protective order uh, that they want the court to issue, or if, if the victim wants to speak at the defendant's sentencing, and tell the court about what um, he or she thinks should happen to the case, then they can do so via these remote links. Uh, the other option is through telephone, and that's through, here in Santa Clara County, we have public access telephone lines. Every court department has a number that the victim or the public can call into if they just wanna listen into the proceedings in the same way in the past that you would just come to court and sit in the gallery and observe. Prosecutors and victim advocates from our DA's office uh, victim Services Unit have continued to be um, in touch with victims, meeting in person as needed, and following all safety protocols, including mass and social distancing, and though we've also shifted to meeting virtually as well. Our Victim Services Unit is um, essentially a crime victim's connection to prosecutor, law enforcement, and our advocates also help victims have a voice in the criminal justice process because we know it can be very intimidating. Um, Victim advocates can assist DV victims with applying for reimbursement for medical expenses and counseling, uh, emergency assistance like finding emergency shelter, crisis support and safety planning. Here in Santa Clara County, our DA's office uh, victim services unit have multiple language capabilities. In addition to English, uh, we have Spanish, Vietnamese, Mandarin Chinese and Russian speaking capabilities. Uh, we also have access to the language uh, access line where a third party service provider assists over the phone for other languages that we don't have sort of direct support for. I remind people about the, um, the generational impact of domestic violence, right? About how um, children who grow up witnessing uh, abuse um, oftentimes become um, perpetrators or abuser, uh, perpetrators or victims themselves. And so if they wanna break that cycle of generational violence. Um, it's so difficult, but it's, um, um, it's so important to seek help um, if not from the police, because I know there's um, so many barriers to even being to connect with the police, but from DV service providers, nonprofits. Um, in our county, we have amazing nonprofits who are so connected and embedded in our community, right? Um, and there's these amazing networks of uh, survivors who are supporting one another, helping them find jobs, right? Or helping them uh, have a place to stay. Um, and so um, it's so hard, but it, it, it's, um, yeah, I mean, you, we're never going to break the cycle of violence if we don't speak up.